games I reviewed was Limbo. This is actually part of the Xbox Live thing that's going on with their deal ship that's going on. I'll get to that in a minute. But Limbo is pretty good. It's really nice. It's a nice atmospheric puzzle game. Uh, mostly enough, uh, basically I don't know much about the story. Basically it's about this kid who his sister had passed on. He's worried about her, her fate you know, wherever she's going to heaven or hell or wherever. So he somehow knows that she's trapped between worlds, between heaven and hell, in limbo, or purgatory, as they would say. Um, and he crosses over to into the, into limbo to find her, to see if she's all right. Now, I don't know if that's the true aspect of the game. I mean, there's no dialogue, there's no, there's no talking, there's no explanation, there's no cutscene. Or anything. The minute you start the game, you're instantly in the game. You instantly start. And the atmosphere in Limbo is dark and creepy, almost in a way. I mean, the only color tones you have are white, black, and gray, and it's all mixed together in this. I mean, you don't even see what the character actually looks like. All you see is this big black little f character running around, and the only thing you see are, are his eyes that are lit up, and he's going around, going. Tra traveling for Limbo. Now the thing is, the, it starts off, you know, traveling from a, a, a wooded area to a city. It's almost like an industrial area. So it makes you kind of wonder how far is he going into Limbo? Is, I mean, because Limbo is supposed to be mostly a emptiness or nothingness or stuff that gets lost gets gone, goes to Limbo or something. So, and the thing is, he's not alone. I mean, there are other people there, and apparently for some reason they're they're trying to prevent him from going further into the game. Now, it's also, I mean, there's tons of puzzles. Basically, you have to be on your feet and think ahead. I mean, you, have to, you really have to think ahead. This game is really challenging. And you're not going to be able to die. You, well, I'll be honest with you. If you're, trying, if you're an achievement hunter like myself, and you want that achievement where you're not supposed to die less than five times, forget that. You're going to have to go back and play the game. This game has great replay value, especially if you're missing stuff, because most of the achievements are in this game is finding certain little Easter eggs in the game. So, like I said, I mean, the game is atmospheric. Not to mention, it's very gruesome. I mean, honestly enough, if you're very screamish about seeing children getting killed in games, this might be a little difficult, because there are scenes that are, even though it's in bl most of black, gray and white, it is still a little screamish. They don't show blood, but you get the general atmosphere. I mean, you can hear it, too. I mean, everything in this game wants to hear. If you hear a kid getting his head chopped off by a bear trap, you hear that. If you hear a kid getting impaled on a piece of wood or a spike, you hear the sound of the spike squishing into the flesh. Or if you're getting chopped up by a chainsaw, you can hear the blades just going like slicing right through the kid. It's it's even though I, I even though this game is really fun to play, it does have great replay value. It's also a little gruesome if you're against kids getting killed in games. But it's really fun to play. And it's a really good pickup. Now, this is part of a program that Xbox is doing right now where it, you buy this game and four others, you get like 1,200 Microsoft points. Uh, it's part of the deal. Or any which way. Limbo, I have to say, is in the top. I would get Limbo. Even if you don't, if, even if you don't want to get the other games, I would get Limbo. It's fun. It's got long levels. I mean, it's constantly going through and everything. It's just a great game. The other game I got was Death Spank. This is kind of like a fun roaming RPG kind of game. It's pretty good. I mean, mostly enough, it's, it's a comedic kind of RPG game. Mostly enough, you're playing a hero named Death Spank who's after an artifact. And of course, his quest to find the artifact, become a true hero, and, move, and you know, be, be rewarded with rich and fame. Um... Yeah, this is pretty funny. I mean, mostly enough, there are very few cutscenes in the game. They're mostly just very small, like maybe three or four at tops. The dialogue is funny, at least. The, the dialogue in the game is funny. Mostly when you're interacting or going doing the side quest, there are a whole lot of funny dialogues and weird things. Not to mention, for being a game that's supposed to be evolving with medieval enough, they do mix in a lot of weird 
characteristics. Like mostly they'll, they'll talk about, I, I don't know, underwear or iPods or stuff like that. It's really fun, but it is kind of short and it, do, it doesn't keep going. Mostly enough, and it's like, if you, um, basically it's just, just going around being, ha it's mostly hack and slash. The controls on the game are very well done, I have to say. Um, everything, every button on your controller is used for something. Mostly enough, you have a variety of weapons, mostly f using your button controls. Mostly enough, one weapon would be a, a magic weapon, one would be a crossbow, a, an axe weapon, or a sword weapon. You can multi-change this, too. I mean, you can customize the weapon control to your design, which is really nice. Um, D-pad would mostly be is the same way. Mostly that would be considered using for potions or health. You can customize it for your fitting. Basic controls are moving movement and looking around are the same and everything. Targeting control is also in there. This is a good thing. But mostly the targeting pretty much locks onto anything. That you, auto control locking locks on almost anything. So you're not gonna you're not gonna be able to miss a target pretty much pretty much if you're shooting from long distances with your crossbow, which I usually did. The game is kind of like I said, short. I mean, if you do all the side quests and everything, you're looking about maybe a good five hours of gameplay, maybe six tops. It depends. If you beat the game and you have to keep leveling up, that's another thing. Leveling up only goes up to 20. So it is an achievement for that. But, you know, the thing is, if you do level up to 20, that's it. That's as far as you go. It, it does kind of have a little bit of a wow feel to it, because we know we're looking at the controls, but mm, with, the, with the way it looks. But that's pretty much it. I mean, basically, customization is basically done on your behalf. But I put everything to auto, so no matter what, I would always level up faster or have all the best weapons to play in the game. The side quests are pretty fun, too. Most of them are pretty funny. Some of them are mostly going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, which is kind of fun in a way, but after a while it gets kind of repetitive. But that's basically it. Um, so that's it. Hope you guys enjoy. Thanks.